For more on this, Paula Stern joins us. She's the founder and chair of the Stern Group. Um, she's also the former chairwoman of the U.S. International Trade Commission. So you've got a lot to say about this. Let me start with the dispute itself because I think a lot of folks don't realize that the European Commission consists of 27, 27 different countries, right. some of them which have opposed this, this tariff, so to speak, but there's no voting involved, right? Not at this point. Um, this is a decision that was made by the trade commissioner, this Carl de Goot, uh, based on legal uh, issues that uh, are embedded uh, that reflect the WTO rules and based on the facts. Um, so it's an administrative decision by this okay. independent group. It's also important to clarify, it is not a final decision of any sort. There are 60 days um, that's been widely reported that the two sides potentially could work out a deal, right? Potentially they could, exactly. Um, the, uh, there was a lot of pressure put on uh, the EU Commission to uh, not put on the, the full uh, tariffs which they thought were merited. And instead they came up with this kind of arrangement. The current penalty is 12% in addition to the existing taxes, which I believe makes it just under around 50%. Um, let me switch gears here. Weren't they trying to already work out a deal prior and what happened? Oh, I, uh, frankly, I think they, as, as soon as the complaint uh, was brought, I, I'm sure there were efforts to work out a deal. I don't think that uh, the commission really w wanted to put these tariffs on because there's a lot of pull within the community, the European Union, um, some concerned about the consumer saying, what, we like cheap imports from China uh, and we want to fight climate change. But then there were the producers of these solar panels within Europe saying, wait a minute, the Chinese are dumping these goods Which here. Which potentially could kill jobs. Which That's could kill it. our jobs and kill our industry. And it's, un it's called an unfair trade practice. And the, the China is part of the WTO. They understand the rules. They broke them. So I don't know how many jobs Europe is claiming that they might lose, but China is saying that it's 400,000. So it sounds like either we lose jobs in one country over another country. And that's essentially what this fight is about. Well, jobs are certainly uh, are critically important, but also just the fact that entrepreneurs, at least in Europe, have invested real money, their own money, sometimes they borrowed some from the private banks, to create this new capacity in solar panels. And the idea that those entrepreneurs have to, if you will, um, go up against the enormous sums of funds that came from Chinese government banks to the Chinese producers makes it really an unfair, tilted playing field. But both sides are going to fight for what they think is right. Why hasn't this deal gotten done? What's the, what's the sticking point at this point? I mean, are they close? Well, I, I don't know if they're close, but I can say that the, the, the idea of having this breathing spell, these 60 days, is an effort to try to find some kind of a settlement. And I think one of the key elements to making them come even closer is for people to quiet down the rhetoric. I think this, you know, these uh, use of the word trade wars, the use of the word retaliation um, uh, suggests to me that you get this hyperbolic uh, tension that then puts pressure on each of the governments well, I mean, to be even tougher. I mean, it brings up an interesting point because in other trade disputes that, that we've covered here, yes. you know, you see 50%, 100% taxes. We're talking about 12% in additional taxes. I mean, I'm sorry, this doesn't seem to define a company or, or, or destroy a, an entire business or lose hundreds of thousands of employees. There must be something more to this than just 12%. Well, it's, it absolutely, um, it's 80% 80 of the market has been taken now by the Chinese. This is about market Europe. share. Oh, it's about market share, and you, how do you get market share? You, uh, one way is to sell your product for as cheap as possible, and if you have you know, special arrangements where you can, for a period of time, uh, sell at less than your cost of production, you can wipe right. out your competition. I've only got a minute, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. If you don't mind, no. if you were advising the European countries, yes. what would you tell them? 
I would say stick with the WTO rules. Um, this was a, a legal uh, situation, but try to uh, con con tell the Chinese that it's in their interest also to stick to the WTO And if you were WTO talking to the Chinese, rules. what would you tell exactly. them? Exactly. The WTO uh, it, uh, best advice is for them to say, okay, those are the rules. We will settle on this, and we will not talk about retaliation, et cetera. I think that's the best advice. Paula Stern, uh, very insightful. Thank you very Thank much you. on an uh, intriguing case, to say the least.